Hello and welcome to C Programming Boot Camp Part 1. My name is Donna Martin. In this particular class, we're going to introduce you to the C programming language, the layout of a C program. We're going to talk about control statements, loops, and functions. By the time you're done with Part 1, you'll be programming and writing C programs. So we're not just going to show you what a C program looks like. We're going to have you out there compiling and trying one yourself and uh, getting you on your way to becoming a very good and efficient C programmer. So as a result of taking this class, you'll be able to write C programs. You'll not only identify safe C programming practices, we're hoping that you'll implement them. Basically, C is a language that gives you a lot of freedom, and with that freedom comes responsibility. So there's a lot of things that lets you do that you can't do in other languages because it's intended to allow you to really interact with the system. So you get a lot of privileges so that you can do that. But you can also get yourself into trouble. So we want to help you understand what's really going on and why so that when you're programming, you really have a feel for what you're doing. We'll talk about control statements, if statements, switches, loops, that type of thing, so that you can build you know, more than just a simple C program. You can start doing some pretty sophisticated things. And then we're going to talk about how to take your C programs and divide them up into functions and macros so that you can use a set of code over and over again. We assume you already have experience with a programming language of some sort, not with C, but just that you understand the concepts of, you know, what is a variable and what do we mean when we talk about writing a program and um, how to use an editor, that type of thing. So we assume that you're comfortable with whatever operating system you're working on so that we don't teach you command lines and we don't teach you editing commands or anything like that. We just assume that you're comfortable with your computer. So what we're going to be talking about in this specific course is what is C. Again, I want you to have a really good understanding of why the language was created so you can get a feel for how to use it well. We'll start by looking at a simple C program and doing some demos and showing you how things work. I think that looking at C code right away and getting a feel for its syntax and how it's laid out and what the pieces do will help you get a jump start on the language. And then we'll start going into individual sections and see what's happening. We'll go over a few more basics after you've seen a simple C program. We'll talk about variables and how you declare them in C and different data types and what's available to you in the language, including some fairly sophisticated data types we'll talk about. We're then going to move on to conditional expressions, which is kind of like a shorthand way of doing an if statement. And we'll talk about macros so you can start modularizing your code. We're going to introduce switch statements, which is a nice, efficient way of controlling the logic in your program if you want to do you know, A, B, or C, depending upon what the decision is. And then we'll talk about loops. There's several types of loops in C, and we'll discuss them and give you an idea for when you would use one versus the other. And then that will lead us to functions, because by then you'll have enough um, C programming abilities that you're going to start writing code that you're going to want to reuse. So we'll talk about how to write functions and how to pass things in and how to return things. We're also going to talk about arithmetic operations you know, the basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and remainder, but there's some other things we'll talk about in that section. And we'll also discuss if statements so that you can really control how things are going in your code. Now, as far as what you need, you need computers. You need some way of accessing the module, which you're listening to right now. And uh, it doesn't matter what kind. It doesn't matter if you're on a Windows machine or a Mac or you're using Linux. It, it really doesn't matter what your hardware is. We're going to just assume that you have some way to access the courses. And then software-wise, you need a C compiler. Now, you might have one on your system that you can just use, especially if you have a Linux machine. You probably have a, you should definitely have a C compiler installed because Linux comes with a C compiler, as does all the Unix flavors. Mac OS, uh, you can actually have 
a C compiler installed, there is a developer toolkit that is available for most Macs. And then Windows normally does not come with one installed, but there are several freely available if you want to go through that process. However, we're not going to go through how to install a C compiler and do all those things. We're going to assume that you have access to a C compiler, and if you don't have one on your system, then you can use I'm sorry, you can utilize an online C compiler, which is what we're going to be doing in the class. There's a lot of them out there. We're going to use several different ones because, you know, they come and go. Though the ones that we use in the course are ones that have, have been around for a while, so I don't expect them to disappear, but the web is constantly changing. So I wanted to give you multiple options, and then there's also just simply the point that you may like one better than the other. So there's quite a few out there. If you just do a general Google, you'll want to go to some of the sites that are reputable that make recommendations. But IDE1, Colaroo, OneBox, Rex, Tester, CodePad, these are all some of the online C compilers that you might be interested in looking at. All right, so here is the curriculum path. If you're not a programmer, we assume that you've had the Programming for Non-Programmers course so that you have an understanding of programming theory, how to approach a problem, and just some of the basic, basic parts of what it takes to be a programmer. And then if you're not really comfortable with computers and operating systems, you would want to take the Fundamentals of Operating Systems course, and then that would lead you here to the C Programming Boot Camp Parts 1 and Parts 2. Now this is assuming this is if you're interested in the Objective C and the iOS programming branch of uh, applications. If you aren't interested in the C programming, if you're not going to do the iOS programming, then after Fundamentals of Operating Systems, you might move on the other branch of the tree and learn about Java, and that would take you into the Android programming world. All right, so if you're ready to get started, there's a few more things you need to know. There is a student guide available for you that you can download from the course page on the website. There's also an exercise guide with sample solutions, though I ask that you attempt the exercise before you look, <laughs> kind of like the crossword puzzle answers in the back. And also, we will be going over every sample solution that I create in the module. So we'll present a workshop for you, and then we will also present the sample solution and talk about it in some detail. So you don't just have the written copy, you'll also have uh, something to listen to to see how things are working. There's a lab setup guide, but again, basically, if you have a C compiler, you're welcome to use it. We assume you already know how and that you have some sort of an editor. Otherwise, you can follow along with us and use some of the online C compilers as we go. All right, so that's the details. Let's get started.